Coming up next on Get Caught in a Net. You are now tuned in to Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette, where your hosts, Annette Harris, analyze intriguing life questions and concerns, such as, do Christians suffer from mental illness? Have you wondered why they act abnormal? Or you may ask, what is really going on in their minds? Do you need Annette? Well, keep listening for a biblical understanding of the psychology of the mind. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another wonderful segment of Mind, Body, and Soul with Annette. I'm your host, Annette Harris. I want to thank you in advance for watching and, and or listening. I am also your certified mental health ambassador and author of Surviving a Silence Heartbeat. I'm so excited that you have consented to join us on today. Listen, before I get started, I want to pray. Lord, we thank you for all things. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've blessed us to see. It's a great day and you have allowed us to be here. We pray that you would get the glory out of everything we go to say and do in Jesus name we pray. And and the opening scripture is the first part of Hosea 4 and 6, and it states, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And again, I'm grateful to be here on this afternoon. I always say, if you see my face around noon on a Wednesday, it's time for you to come on in and get caught in the net. It is going to be a wonderful segment. Uh, many of you know that at the beginning of this year, I was uh, commissioned um, the Lord commissioned me to bring in this Wisdom Wednesday segment to kind of um, bring in more of the spiritual aspect of our everyday lives. Uh, and, you know, we, of course, we, we still focus on psychological, but he wanted me to do a little bit more here. And so I uh, we started off. Um, this will be our fourth Wisdom uh, Wisdom Wednesday segment of the year. So I reached out to a young lady who I just, I think the world of. She's a sweetheart and she is one who, I love her love for God's people, okay? I love her love for encouraging others. And mm -hmm. so I say, you know what? I know she's got a lot, a lot to say. Um, and the reason why I say that, I see it in her posts. I see it in her, her personal messages to me. And so I said, mm, I'm going to see if she can come on. And she said, yes. So I'm excited about that. Now, before I bring her on, let me let you know, there are a few different ways that you can watch us on today. I am live on my Instagram channel, uh, Get Caught in Net. Also live on Facebook, Annette Get Caught in Net. 
I'm also live on my YouTube channel, Get Caught in the Net Incorporated. So yeah, three different ways you can watch and listen to us on today. And uh, just a little note, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I do encourage you to please do so. We are trying to build that channel up and I, I encourage you to do that. We have uh, various videos, um, going out encouragement videos and also our shows, our segments that we do weekly. So make sure you do that on today, of course, and click the bell to know when we go live. Let me bring in this beautiful woman of God. Oh my goodness, you guys are going to be so excited on today. <laughs> You're going to be enlightened. We have a beautiful <laughs> man. <laughs> Nicole Reed is in the house. She's in the virtual Hallelujah. house. <laughs> How <Hello>. you feeling? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. To, happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh, I should have told y'all that Nicole and I, we, we love to have a good time. We oh, love yeah, to we have a good time whenever we get together. <laughs> So it's not gonna, like it's going to be like a really like serious segment where we're going to be, you know, all stiff shirted and everything, you know, uh, <laughs> stiff necked. Well, I said stiff shirted. That too. Uh, but <laughs> but I, I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I love her so much is because she's a realist and she's down to earth. Uh, she'll make you laugh in a minute, but she will tell you, you know, the real. She'll, she'll give you the, you know, the scoop. She'll be real with you. And I love when she says, Father God, Father God. Father God. <laughs> That's how she addresses, you know, her savior. And I, I, I love it because it, she's being personal with him. And, you know, we can't be personal with our savior. Who can we be yeah. personal with? So how are you doing? I know I asked you that already. How have things been going for you? I'm doing extremely well. Enjoying. It's 70 today. I am so confused. <laughs> Chicago weather's nuts. Right, 70 right. degrees. But like, I'm good. good. I'm, here. <laughs> I'm doing extremely well right now. Extremely well. Good, good, good. Well, we, we need to hurry up and do this segment so we get out and enjoy that weather, like, right? <laughs> like, for real, like, whoop. <laughs> I know, I know. But I think the weather is trying to clear up for us because I know we've had some crazy, some craziness yeah. going on we're, we're with so. the weather. But, you know, that's all God. And, you know, whatever he wants to do, we want to make sure that we are... <laughs> in his people way. People ain't okay. praying. That's how I be saying. The people ain't praying. Uh -oh. <laughs> we need this all year yeah. round. <laughs> See? Okay. All right. I hear you now. I see you guys coming in. I want to thank you so much. I see you on Instagram over here. I see you, Apostle Hunt, uh, Janice, and uh, Brandy. Thank y'all so much. Y'all so sweet. Make sure y'all <laughs> click that share button because I don't think I said that. I need you to click the share button. Um, guess how much it costs you? Nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> click the share button go ahead throw up the hearts the like the care button for us if you would not mind when you're doing that you're pushing this this um actual segment out and i know there are more of you that are out there so if you want to just type in hey hi and i can recognize your name on today let me do this i i, I like to show this <laughs> that is so hey, cute i love it <laughs> janine hey. It says greetings, like to share. I love that. And then <laughs> Brandy says greetings, wise and beautiful women of God. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, greetings, it costs you nothing to share. See, my co host, he know. He knows. He understands. <laughs> he understands. Okay, so let me let me read just a couple of uh, tidbits of uh, Nicole's bio. And actually, you guys know that she's been on before. She's not a novice to Mind, Body, and Soul or coming to get caught in the net. She's been out here a number of times, but um, let me just read a little bit in case you don't know who she is. <laughs> All right, she is the co-founder of the Still Searching Project. I love that. And project manager of the Still Searching Project. Okay, so co-founder and project manager. Yeah. She wears a lot of hats. <laughs> she uses performing and visual arts to raise awareness about underrepresented women who are missing in the Chicagoland area. The goal of SSP, Still Searching Project, is to bring attention to missing women and girls uh, cases in the hopes of finding real answers, to honor the families of the missing, to address the need for public safety, to inspire community organizing and participation, and also to be a voice for the voiceless. Uh, yeah. That good. Who's, that, who's that? You know what? Hey, that's my friend. That's my friend. <laughs> and that y'all mess with it either. Okay. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> yeah, but no, that that's a lot. But you know, that's not all that she does. But that that's just a little tidbit from her from her bio. We know that Nicole is an actress. She's an activist. You know, you just heard that. Um, but you know, she's a wife. She's a mother. Two beautiful, gorgeous girls. Uh, and you know, I love how she stands by her man. If oh, you yeah. will, <laughs> will push and promote that man, Damon Reed, and you all need to look him up too. He's a Definitely. wonderful um, artist and rapper too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's they they got a lot going on. They're a power couple, and I love it. So you will notice on today the reason why. I am. Uh, I wanted to highlight her. I'm laughing because somebody is on Facebook and Instagram at the same time, and they say, "Hey, I'm over here too." So I'm sorry. I'm just, I, just <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see you, Dominican. I see you over there, Brandy. Uh, let's see. Deatrice is here. She says, "Good afternoon, everyone. Hey. Thanks for sharing. We appreciate that." And Apostle Hunt says he's like your spirit. I oh, love her yeah. spirit. Too. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. We're going to hop into this because, you know, she and I can get the giggling and laughing all day. Like, what kind of wisdom, day wisdom was segment was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I really wanted to kind of um, bring out, you know, of course, you know, all the different things that you do. But see, we, we as women, a lot of times we wear a lot of hats, right? Mm-hmm. But then knowing how to balance it and knowing how to, to bring in that wisdom aspect Mm-hmm. you know, to our everyday life is, is, is going to be key. It's mm-hmm. going to be key to our success. All right. So I see you, mm-hmm. if I can say it like this, doing a doggone thing. Okay. I see you. Yes. And I, and I, I see how, <laughs> how God is blessing you, but see, I, I think you'll be an encouragement and a help to so many of us. All right. Mm-hmm. So as a businesswoman, mm-hmm. as an activist, as a woman of God, as a wife, a mother, we've already stated, um, I want to see how you can kind of expound on today and give us some wisdom nuggets. How you balance and all this? Let's just start there first. Yeah. The balance of it all uh, is 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 going to be is going to be key. I, I'm, you know what? Before you go in today, uh-huh. yesterday she and I, Nicole and I had a little conversation over in the inbox. <laughs> was it yesterday? Or the day before yesterday, and I was saying something to her, and she said, "Well." Um, she asked me a question and I was like, huh? I was a little bit confused. She said, she said wait a minute. Okay. And then she, she went back. She said, okay, the email you sent me. And I said, girl, that's why I need an assistant. You and do. So with the balancing yeah. of it yeah. and everything. So mm-hmm. that that's what's going to She said, I did. Yeah. I heard that. Um, so let's, I wanted to throw that in because again, we're yeah. balancing. Yeah. How do you do it? Number one, how do you balance all of this? So one, I would say the first thing I could think of is Father God. If I'm not good with Father God, nothing else works. So for me, I know a lot of people say, well, you first have to pour into yourself or you won't have anything else to pour into other people. But for me, I think the more I pour into Father God, the more I have time for myself and other people. So for me, if I get my relationship, my timing with him right then everything else will be able to just almost like trickle down the right way. Um, my background, and I think one of the things Father God gave me is project management. So for me, it's almost like as one thing is going on, something else is also being, it's almost like you're you're looking at your day. So what me and Damon do uh, every day, we go through our day. Hey, before we start anything, what do you have going on? What do I have going on? How can we mesh in the middle? What do you need me for? What do I need you for? So we start our day with a plan. And I think for most people, it's not that most people can't do well. It's just that people don't strategize. People don't plan their days. You have to plan your days. It's good to say that you want Father God to do this. You want to be able to do that. But if you don't make concrete goals and you don't plan your day and you don't have strategies set, you're going to spend the rest of your life dreaming about what you could do when you can actually make movement toward what you want to do. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait, I got to write that down. (laughs) Okay, so... So you talked about strategizing, and I get that. Okay, mm-hmm. and and so, and and I and I think that's key because mm-hmm. that's what's going, of course, going to help you organize. Mm-hmm. And I know I mentioned, you know, that we women we take on a lot, men take on a lot too. I don't yeah. want to, you know, we uh, know, yeah, we know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> we know how you are. You know, you know, it's good that you said it because some women are like that. Yeah, women have more. No, everybody has a load that Father God gave them. You know what I mean? Yes. I get you. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then we're in this fast paced society now. So it, it does not matter what gender you are. A lot it of times it's a lot, it's a lot going on. Um, you guys, if you have any questions or comments for Nicole on today, go ahead and throw them into the comment section. Uh, you agree with us and, 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 and what we're saying, um, I'm going to hear from you on today. Okay. So th this is not just, you know, uh, interaction, my interaction with how I want you guys to interact as well. Um, and then we'll also engage with you. So, okay. So strategizing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what was that last part that I, I think I need to put as a, as a comment? What was the last part did you look, say? I, I haven't, I don't remember. You Once it's out there, it's just, <laughs> but for me, strategy, and here's the thing, strategy, I'm just being honest. Strategy doesn't even have to be something deep. I think people, we, most people are overthinkers. And so they talk themselves out of what Father God wants them to do. It's really something very simple. You take whatever it is you believe Father God gave uh, gave you to do or whatever you think, whatever you want to do. Let's say if I want to go to college and you break that thing down to the very smallest part that you can actually start on doing and you go from there. It's as simple as that. But most of the time, like it just looks so big and so vast that we focus on the elephant versus just looking at the trunk or just looking at the leg or the tail or something like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And she said, trunk, guys, trunk, T-R-U-N-K. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that went over somebody's head. That went over somebody's head. <laughs> okay, all right. So and let me let me ease this in here. Okay, so you, um, there was something, of course, that was placed um, in your life, on your plate, mm -hmm. that you weren't expecting. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> and, and, and so that was another thing that you had to yeah. work through, strategize through. Can you can can we start talking about that time frame? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you were when you were diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. So people are gonna think I'm nuts when I speak my story, but I understand some sometimes when things happen to you, um, I think <laughs> people almost think like um I don't know why people think I'm immune to situations that happen or like, I guess, I don't know. It's just really weird. Like people think I'm the strong, I'm considered the strong friend and I'd be like, right. <laughs> All day is Jesus. But um, uh, what is it this year, July, I'll be officially two years full remission from terminal cancer. Um, it was mediastinal lymphoma. Um, I had one huge mass behind my arc going through my spine and then 13, no, it was 11 going down my lumbar spine. It cut off all circulation of my legs. I couldn't stand, couldn't walk. And then it became terminal because it kept spreading within a three week period of time. Um, during that time, people would have thought I was nuts because I was still writing. <laughs> I was still going on meetings as I was doing chemo. I had to do six rounds of chemo five days a week, 24 seven, and then come back for an additional round. Um, I had over, I think, eight surgeries. Uh, where they had to go into my spine and put brain, uh, not they had to put chemotherapy through my spine and my brain just to make sure everything else, no cancer cells were there. Um, it was a lot that happened. Um, it was a crazy space and time where I'm very organized. And I said, Father God, this is really doesn't fit with my plan <laughs> that I had set. But when I say that, Father God, I have no medical bills. He paid for everything. Um, huh. During that time, during that time, I think our family doubled in salary. <laughs> this is the crazy things that it's kind of like it, when you you have what's happening in your life versus the blessing of Father God still flowing. Um, I think during that time, the first thing I realized is that I have to totally depend on God. I have to understand how to delegate. I'm one of those people that I don't want to wait around to when somebody else can fit something that I ask them to do within their schedule. I do it myself. Um, but he showed me how to delegate because no man is an island. Um, that's one thing that one of the hardest thing I, things I think I had to learn was um, you can be self-sufficient, but Father God made us interdependent. Um, and I'm very independent um, to the point where Damon changed me because I would say I was probably a full feminist uh, before I got married. I never thought about getting married, never wanted to get married, never wanted to have children or anything. And people never know, people would never think that. But I was like, I'm good. What do you mean? I don't need no man. But uh, something about that man, Damon. <laughs> Changed all that. But um, when cancer came in, um, it totally shook me. Um, and it, it wasn't like Father God. I feel like he told me, but I wasn't trying to hear it. Like it was almost like, hey, Nicole, prepare. But I didn't know what I was preparing for. But um, when that came in, 
I had a choice. And he told me, he said, don't tell anybody. It was only like, I think maybe like three or four people that I told. I couldn't tell everybody else. He said, from the time that it occurs, I don't want the way your joy to be affected until the time everything's over. So he already told me it was going to end and I was going to be okay. Um, even though the doctor said something totally different. But he said, from the time that you find out to the time that it's all the way over, nobody's going to see the change in the joy of who you are. So I'm posting. I'm going to meetings. I'm showing up. <laughs> I'm writing. I'm acting. I'm doing all that in the midst of, what was that? That was probably a year, a full year of that time. It was crazy. You know what? <clears throat> you know you know. I'm going to say something right here, right? <laughs> I, You know, it, it amazes me how um, when individuals go through things, it, it, it affect everybody's affected differently, whether it's the mm -hmm. same thing they're going through or something different. This young lady, I'm going to tell you guys that are listening. I had no clue. Now, mind you, she just said that she only told a few people. Mm -hmm. I had no clue that she was going through this. And I never would have known until she gave her testimony. Yeah. You know why I wouldn't have known? This chick here. <laughs> and she, will inbox you, she will inbox me in a minute with with uh, encouragement words and videos and this, that, and the other. Now, I'm talking about Annette. I know she probably inboxed y'all too, but I'm just talking about <laughs> yeah. So, So here, here it is. I'm constantly getting messages from her. And, you know, I'm like, thank you, whatever, loving it, hearting it or whatever. And, and, and saying, you know, and I'm realizing. And then when she came and gave her testimony, I said, wait a minute. That was during the, she, what? It was during the same time that she was, dang, she was going through. She was dealing with this cancer and still encouraging somebody else, still reaching out to somebody else, trying to make sure that they have a good day. I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now, but yeah. that showed me something. Yeah. I said, my God. Of course, it showed me, you know, the grace of God. Yeah. But this woman's character and how she, she, said, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Now she was no, doing no. it before she was diagnosed, but I'm, I'm saying I, I put two and two together and I think I even asked you. Yeah. I said, wait a minute. Were you? <laughs> you did. You know, <laughs> at this, how are you yeah. still encouraging me? Yeah. How are you still reaching out to me? Yeah. Oh my God. I received so much strength from that. Yeah. That was all Father God. That was my room was popping though. I will say that <laughs> when I was in the hospital, I and it's it's it, when I say certain things, people look at me like I'm nuts. But I'm like, I remember. Um, I was the nurse was coming to my room. I was signing their kids up for acting class. No, I was researching job information for people. I was praying healing for people because I had a team of probably like 18 doctors every day. They would come in. They were like the one doctor. He had a thing where he said, next time I come here, you're going to be in your heels because I was mad. Like I was very vain. And I know it's, uh, most people will say this about cancer. I was like, Lord, I don't want to lose my edges. Father God, I can't walk in my heels. I'm like, <laughs> it was it was bad. And they would look at me like I'm nuts. Like, they, like, you have to get your house in order. And I was like, it is in order. They were like, no. <laughs> I'm like, can I get a personal trainer? Nicole. You have okay, Nicole. Uh, they had a um, they had the chaplain come in because they said she's not getting it. She's not understanding that you know, what I mean, she has to. It's it's you know what I mean. It, we can't stop it. It's it's multiplying so fast. And I was like, well, can I get a personal trainer? So I was doing like prison push-ups on my walker because they wouldn't give me no personal trainer. I was like, y'all got me messed up. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I got things to do. And then my daughters. I mean, just the thought I had at that period of time, it was it's very rare for me and Damon to be away from my, my daughters and okay. to be away from them five days at a time. Woo, that that was the part that was getting me that I was like, Father God, I know this is not of you. Um, I know that you didn't put this on me. So I'm fighting this with everything that I have. They got me messed up because I'm not ready to see you. I mean, other people, I, I love you, Jesus. I really do. But I'd rather see you in how you are in the earth. <laughs> And that isn't hasn't happened for right now. Like, right. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was, I done told you already, this girl, she gonna keep me in stitches. But again, <laughs> this just lets you know what I was what I was uh dealing yeah. with. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was still the same. She did not, she did not change. Uh, maybe I, I see you guys in here, and Damon did show up. Hey! Like, oh, sorry. I get excited <laughs> when I see him. Whoop! 
my god look, wait look at this other comment he said i got game you, you do talking? he do all those chicken sandwiches and smoothies he's the cook for me y'all get y'all yeah what you all are accepting today is crazy See? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Because a man will do what you allow him to do if you force to have your standards. And plus, you should have a man who has standards anyway who want to do you well. But never mind. I'm gonna be quiet. See, but see, that's part of that wisdom we're gonna get into yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um, but you already this is already wisdom here. Um, let's see. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh Deatrice says this with a testimony. I know she's just getting started. Yes, she's yeah. she's got a whole lot yeah. to tell. Yeah. Uh Damon said he was like, Let's tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was. Damon don't care. Damon, I told you, he extrovert, y'all. He's told. See, he was like, tell everybody, let everybody know. And I was like, no. He only told me yeah. certain people. Yeah, yeah. And you, I'm glad you. And okay, so let, let, let's stop there. I'm, I'm gonna read the rest of y'all comments. Let, let me interject that. How how hard was that though? I know you said you, the Lord told you only to tell certain people. But I'm sure, and I don't know, Damon, if I'm putting words in your mouth, maybe you're thinking, let's tell everybody so people can pray, you know, or 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 what have you. How hard was that for you to stick to that and not tell anybody? Well, one, I'm private anyway, so that wasn't too hard for me. Uh, but it was for me, it was almost like, um, I remember the scripture talks about how Father God would never put you to shame. And for mm -hmm. me, weakness is a shame. And it was something like, okay, um, the people that I reached out to, I don't name names, I'm honorable, um, but it was people that I reached out to to pray for me and my head was down. And so okay. one of the biggest things that I learned during this time is that you really have to know the people who are praying for you. Um, it's easy to say that I'm praying for somebody and then everybody goes through life at the same time. So you have to have that understanding, too. So you can't be bitter and bothered by and I'm not bitter and bothered, um, but you have to know the people or your hedge. And for mm -hmm. me, my head was down. It was down big time. It hit. It was like holy draws. So <laughs> one of the things I want, that's one of the reasons why I realized Father God said to keep it small. Also, too, you want to have people who will just the same way I like to motivate. I like to inspire. I like to always bring Father God to the forefront. You need those kind of people. Um, I have made sure that the people around me were not people who would say anything but the word. And I'm not saying yeah. the weird spooky way. I'm just saying that you will live and you would not die. You would declare the works of the Lord. I'm saying that uh, you, uh, Father God, has made you, uh, you're blessed to be a blessing. So it's like when you have people around you that are putting in your environment the whole, the Holy Spirit back for, because you'll have people that, and you know, it's nothing wrong with that. People who are very empathic and they're like, oh my God, I don't want you to die. That's not the time for that. I didn't really have a time or moment where I can actually, and I remember that. I didn't have a time or moment where I can actually gather myself. When they say prepare yourself, like you're supposed to be preparing yourself all along the way, I didn't have that. It was more so of I was having a bad time. I, I was with my sisters on a girl, uh, a sister trip. I had to fly back in early because the pain had gotten so bad. But it was a pain that it would be, had been getting progressively worse. And I'm like, okay, God, what is this? I don't know what it is. They was like, fly back in. We're going straight to the emergency room. Went there. I literally, they had just, I was about to sit down. In the wheelchair, my my from the my navel down, everything went out. Only thing I remember saying was Jesus. Next thing I, I know, I'm I'm straight up in the hospital room out, and that's when they told me everything. So I didn't have a time to prepare. So one of the biggest things I will say is to make sure at all times. And I'm one of those people that you know people say you supposed to pray over every meal. I'm like, if I pray at the beginning of the year, it's gonna last the rest of it. I mean, the word still works, and you know, don't come back void. But I will say that make sure you have a hedge of people around you who are only going to speak life into you. Make sure you have people who are uh, self starters. Um, a lot of times we have people around that not that they wouldn't pray, but I want somebody who's already saying something's off. Father God, I, I'm, I'm sensing something's off. I don't know what it is, but I'm praying for her. You need people who actually can hear from God. You need people who can actually pray for you without the emotion. And I know it sounds really weird, but Father God gives us emotions as locators. That's all. But he doesn't want us to operate out of those emotions. They just locate you in terms of where you are so that you know what word to use. That's how, how I see it. And so I had a lot of people who are emotion, yeah. emotional or emotionless. <laughs> It was like, dang, I don't, I don't matter. Okay, that's kind of. <laughs> I had therapy. Don't worry, I had therapy, guy. Well, yeah, I had therapy, so I'm, I'm okay now. Yeah. 
love it. I love it. I love it. Wow. Okay. So th thanks for asking that, uh, answering that question rather, because you, you are again, giving us uh, wisdom in that, in that respect, because, oh my goodness, you know, I, I know God allows certain things to happen to certain people. He knows who can handle it, who can, can't, or how much they can bear. Well, I asked um, him to pass it away. I, like Jesus said, <laughs> this will have to be my top Lord. <laughs> Like, I know, you know right. what, Lord, if this, you allowed it. So I know you allowed it, but <clears throat> you can change your mind if you want to. I do not mind. Right. He right. changed his mind. And you, you told him that. Yeah. So now, how long did you go through this? So this was for a full year, a full year. I'd gotten down. I lost um, over 40 pounds. I couldn't, I, I think the what, I remember there was one moment in the whole time. I think that was the weirdest part. I was laying there at that point. I hadn't eaten anything in like 30 days. I couldn't keep anything down. I was on like four different nausea medications. And in total, I was on 21 medications twice a day. And I was at that point, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't go to the bathroom for over a month. So, you know, I was, when the people say you full of, I was, um, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. And I remember laying there and I said, Father God, I know what your word says. I know what it says. And then he showed me the image of a Sherwood tree. And I'm like, Lord, I don't need the metaphoric biblical stuff right now. I just need for you to like show up like or whatever. But he kept showing me a Sherwood tree. And I was like, well, I'm gonna look at Sherwood. But it reminded me of a guy that I knew who did holistic medicine named Sherwood. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I know I'm a seer, but I need you to just give me some words. Just tell me what it is. So I called him, uh, the uh, guy Sherwood, his name is Sherwood Grant. Um, and I called him up. He said, I will meet with you today. He met with me pretty much was helping me within six hours about I was back using the bathroom and eating and keep in mind, I hadn't eaten anything no. in over life, I keep anything down. So, and he told me, he said, normally I don't work with people, but I know your mindset. I don't know how you are the way I even, I couldn't stand um, from the navel down. It was nothing. Um, but we're working with him for, I think it took him almost like maybe a month or two maybe a month or two. And he had me start back by dragging, almost like dragging my body or crawling. He said, because as a baby, you learn how to crawl. And I'm mad. I'm like, I don't know. I did hit workouts five or six times a week. I'm strong, strong. And that was, that's another thing too, not to be ghetto or to interject, but that bothered me too. Cause I had just gotten my body back where I wanted it to be. And then it hit. And I was, so, I'm totally his vanity. I'm sorry. Look, right, pray right. For me. now you know what to pray for me for. But um, yeah, but that so that was working in my head too. And then I was like, Lord, I'm an actress. How am I gonna be able to get back to and then it's like, especially if you're like a leading lady actress, you have to be cute. And I'm just being honest. And and when you're in the industry, you have to look cute, you have to be a certain size, you have to be a certain look. All that was stripped. And I was told that not what not just was it stripped, but you'll never be there again because you're about to you're terminal. And so to have all the enemy, he would come to my head while he thoughts. But I had to strategize against him. And my strategy was joy. I said, I'm only listening to comedies. And I'm sorry, I listen to comedies with cussing because um, it it's funnier. <laughs> um, <laughs> I listened to word nonstop. I guarded my, my environment for what I let into my ear gates was very small. The doctors, I had the doctors only speak the word. I, I'm like, OK, here's what we're going to do. You can say whatever you want to me. That's fine. But afterwards, you got to say, but this is not going to be you. And I had doctors saying that to the point where <laughs> they would come in like, I already know. Look at her. She OK. You're going to be fine. I'm just checking on you. But the doctor started even changing and viewing me as not somebody who was dying because that's what you have to change their mindset, too, because Father God is anointed to doctors. I'm not anyone. I think sometimes Christians get real weird about doctors, but they help people in chronic states. If you were in the right state, you have to go to a doctor. So they have to get you out of a chronic state so that you can have a holistic lifestyle or a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Eat, just eat greens and stuff. No, it depends on where you are. If you're about to die, baby girl, uh, eating some kale ain't gonna help you. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> you have to allow the whatever professionals for whatever time period you, okay, I'm gonna stop. Look, look, I feel I'm, I'm right. gonna stop. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, I'm serious. It was just really intense. And I think father got allow certain things too, because it's like, I think one of the greatest flexes I have, I just believe God from when I was younger. And I went through a lot of different things. I just believe him. I believe that he's good. Um, I believe that he's a healer. I believe that he doesn't lie. I believe that he only has good for me. I may not understand it, but everything works out for my good. I still believe that. People thought it was weird when I was saying he's a healer. 
And I and then I would tell people I have a healing anointing on me. <laughs> Why go on through I'm, this? And I'm terminal. I have a healing anointing on me. You'll see. Because he's gonna heal me. Wow. And he did. Wow. And he did. Yeah. And he, and did. he did. And he did. Um, when you were first diagnosed, how old were you? Do um, you mind? Let's see. No, I don't care. Let's see. I'll be 43 this year. So I was 41. 41? 41. Barely mm -hmm. out of your 30s. Mm -hmm. Barely out of your 30s. And even so, now, because what people don't tell you what cancer does when you have chemo, it automatically throws you into the menopause. Throws you straight in there. Boop. It took away my fingerprints. It's weird stuff that you never know. So I said, if you need me, I got you. Because I had no fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was like, leave me alone. I got no fingerprints. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm, can't trace it back to her. Uh, okay. <laughs> Look, this conversation just went left real quick. <laughs> it did. It did. Let me bring us back in. Uh, Brandy <laughs> says that, that makes sense. Believers who are going through their toughest battles can be the strongest encouragers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she definitely was one. Uh, let's see. Hey, niece. I see you, Trina. Thanks for coming <laughs> in. Appreciate Trina, you. Please you guys make sure you click that, uh, share button. We're about maybe 35, 36 minutes into this, uh, segment on today. And this hey. is our wisdom, 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 Sorry, Wednesday, yeah, thought, yeah, <laughs> wisdom <laughs> Wednesday segment with Nicole Reed. She's an actress. She's an activist. Uh, a beautiful woman of God, wife, mother, and she is talking to us today about wisdom, you know, her, her own journey and, and, and how the Lord has taken her and how the Lord has blessed her. And I don't know if you guys are, are grabbing some of these nuggets she's, she's given us um, while she's sharing about the things that she has gone through. Um, you need to write down some notes. Okay. I think Dame was laughing at the, at the no fingerprints. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this, this, this is good stuff because again, we all have mm -hmm. so much that we're dealing with, whether it's, you know, personal, mm -hmm. you know, external something. I mean, you look at the news we yeah. just don't deal with or whatever, mm -hmm. but we need to know how to, how to handle it. You know, don't, we don't want to become so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. with the things that we're doing or have to do that we break down yeah. that we don't, you know, follow through. Um, so again, that's what these segments are here to help us to, to get through, you yeah. know, get through the things in life. I want to be able to help somebody. Yeah. And, and so I solicit, um, you know, individuals to come on and to help us to do just that. And Nicole is talking today. I mean, she, she's got her testimony alone about, her uh, being diagnosed uh, with cancer, terminal cancer. Let me throw that in there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because you don't want to just say, oh, it was just a little flip and maybe a little something on her finger. No, it was terminal. This girl mm -hmm. went through. Um, and But I, I, I just love that mentality that you had. And I know you said, Father God helped you with it. Yeah. You even got, like you said, you got the medical professionals talking the way you were talking. Yeah. And that is so key. I will, I will say this. Mm -hmm. mm, mm -mm. I remember when my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, yeah, that was so devastating for me. Yeah. My entire family. Mm -hmm. And I, I recall the I recall the moment when her mentality changed toward it. Unfortunately, she, I think she, well, she was in the hospital at the time or whatever. And one of the nurses came in and was like, we're going to put you on hospice. Well, there was nobody in there with her. We weren't in there with her, her, her siblings or anything like that. So that was a lot of, that was some yeah. disheartening news for her to take. Yeah. And by the time they discharged her from the hospital and she came back to my house, cause she was staying at my house at that point, I looked in her face and I, I literally saw death over all over her but her mindset had changed and she received what they said yeah and now my mom she was a woman of god she you yeah. know but yeah. you you have to have like that's why I, th I thought it was just so you know key what you just said get the doctors to say what you're saying if you're yeah. 
you know, saying this or whatever, um, that I'm 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 gonna be healed. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying that this, that, that, and the other is happening in my body, but you know, I'm gonna be healed. I'm healed, you know. Yeah. Um, and I what you speak out your mouth is it matters. It matters because it, it matters. creates your world. And I remember during that time, the another part I forgot, this was during COVID. So for the first portion of it, Damien couldn't even be around. I was by myself because you couldn't have visitors. Right. So <laughs> for me, I was like, ain't this a trip? <laughs> like, this is crazy. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was weird because it was almost like it's one thing when you're strong and mm -hmm. you can speak the word. But you, that's why I was saying, again, goes back to having people around you that will speak the word when you can't speak the word. And so even with the Still Searching Project, when we give a voice to the voiceless, that's one of the reasons why. When these people and these girls and these children, they can't speak for themselves. No. They can't. So who's going to defend? Who's going to try to one? And then we have to think about, too, it's not just the people that are missing. It's their families. Mm -hmm. Because some of them have to now take on, and it's hard to say that, but the burden of, of taking on new family members or how to deal with that mental health aspect of it in terms of being depressed. And I don't want to get out the bed. I'm missing them still. What do I do with this void that's there? Whether that's a mother, sister, daughter, whatever. So it's like, yeah, it's like I realized certain things Father God gave me a greater depth and empathy. And I thought I, I love people a lot. I really did. But in, even in that, I had to have a strategy and even not to have bitterness in my heart, not having bitterness in my heart. Um, and mm -hmm. for me, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I was old school. I was like, black people are going to therapy. What you mean? Go to Jesus, you know, read your Bible. But that, it, it's not that the word doesn't work, but you need tools. And mm -hmm. not that the word doesn't give you tools. But for me, some people need straight application. I'm a kinesthetic learner. I need for you to tell me A, B, and C is what you can use in order to handle triggers. Because I was triggered. If I saw somebody, I was like, you were supposed to pray for me. I could have been like, and you weren't even praying. You know, sorry. I'm really, I'm really excited. <laughs> But it's just like, you know what I mean? But it's like, I, I don't want to, I don't, I never want to live in a state where I'm beneath what Father God has for me. And if you allow like fear, if you allow bitterness, if you allow strife, that stuff will eat away with you like a cancer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want, I didn't want for my physical body to be hit by cancer and also my heart. I couldn't yeah. have it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that, then I said, that, that's some good stuff right there because I'm telling you that forgiveness part, yeah. that aspect, ooh, that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, and it could be the difference between the healing or not. Yeah. Healing. And that will slow your healing because your yeah. body can't function when you have all. And that's that's one of the reasons why Father God wants you to forgive. It's, of course, to let other people go because it's the same grace that they need and mercy. They need you need it, too. And he gave it to you. But it's also because that stuff is like it rots your heart. And it literally when they tell you they you literally had it where they had two plants and, you know, to speak positive words, negative words. The plant that got the negative words, it shriveled up and died. It, mm -hmm. Your body's not meant for that. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. You know, I'm taking notes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, this is this is good. Again, Wisdom Wednesday. We want we want some wisdom on on how to handle uh, whatever we it is we're going through with it. Similar to what my guest has dealt with or something else. Um, you know, these things can be applied. Um you know, to various, various situations. So, okay. I'm, I'm looking here. Um, you saw, you started talking about the still, the still searching project. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, I was going to go somewhere else, but then I'll just go in this direction. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, feel as far as the still searching, and I know you and your husband are working together with this Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about the Still Searching Project, but then talk about your mission as far as that's concerned. Okay. Um, and you've already started a little bit, yeah. but I want to go into a little bit more depth. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you guys' mission with with this with this project, mm -hmm. and um, how you how you're handling this because I, I'm sure it can it can be a little draining too. You know, being connected with these families it is, uh, yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot see, and especially the type of person that you are, mm -hmm. to to deal with the family whose whose family member has been missing and it not affect you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so talk about the project itself, mm -hmm. your mission with it, mm -hmm. and how it's it, it's affecting you. 
So what we do, um, and we've revamped our mission somewhat, um, just because. So when when we first did it, I asked uh, Damon. I said, "Well, for the year, because we plan." I said, "What do you What do you want to do for the year?" And I said, "But more so, what do you What do you think Father God is really calling you to do?" And he's like, "I really think I'm supposed to be doing these paintings or whatever, but they're for women that are and uh, girls that are missing in Chicago." I said, "Okay." I said, "And Father God blew on it." Um, we've done TED Talks, Revolt TV. We've been on the news probably close to probably like 80, 90 times now. It's like Father God just fully funded the projects that we have. Because at first we were putting up our own money in order to do the different um, events and whatnot. And we still do to this day. But we've gotten grants now. We have people who are like private funders and things of that nature. But um, for me, Father God had, and I remember I got a prophetic word that said that for this uh, for this year, Father God was going to have everything that you do, and you literally put that into everything that Damon's doing. And I was like, well, I feel like I support him already, Father God, so I don't understand, but now I understand. That's where the project manager portion comes in, because I'm business-minded. Um, Damon's going to create it, and Damon, Damon's a genius. When I People think of him just in terms of art and music. That man is so business-minded. His business acumen is ridiculous. Like run circles around people, but he's just humble. He don't, it's like he just he just put the work in. But where we we went to like the power couple portion is where in terms of like breaking down uh, me looking at what he did and how his processes are, and then seeing where I could put my skills and uh, whatnot in. So the first thing that I saw, I wanted full circle coverage. I want to make sure that one we can help. Um, the police and the sheriff departments actually have another place that they can get information from um, and then act as like a mediator in between them and the families. I felt like the family aspect was left out. I felt like the family, like we do um, mental health. We just had a mental health panel where I had therapists and life coaches come in and whatever questions they had. So first they would speak or whatever, always have food because um, that food is love for me. Um, and then make sure it's a safe place and then have them where whatever questions they had. And they had a lot of questions and let them just whatever they want to do. Like it's like because sometimes you have that anger, that depression, all that stuff is pent up. And it's easy to give you a hug and say, I'm going to pray for yes. you. But it's another thing to say that, hey, these people here are licensed to be able to tell you what you can do and how do you can help when you're in the middle of the night and you can't stop crying and shaking. Um, I give people full, they have full access to me, uh, 24, um, seven, the families I'm getting so close to them now, it's almost like one of my call, that's my grandma now. <laughs> it's just that it's like you, you start to get those bonds. Um, I have like relationships with the detectives or what I, who work on the cases. Um, so any information that we get, we make sure they're invited to the different uh, community, uh, events that we have where we'll paint a mural, have the community come out. And then that highlights, then when you have the news out there, that's another reason their name is being mentioned again. Um, Cause a lot of times these are cold mm. cases or the cases that where people forget it's easy. It's kind of like at the funeral That's when you have people there to support you. And then all of a sudden the day after and a couple of days and a week after the calls and texts get less and less and less. It's mm -hmm. the same way with them. So we do usually tend to do something like every month where it's either we do um, we do uh, self-defense classes. Um, we made sure that they have like the different alarms so they can put on their keychains or whatnot. But then we also teach them how to fight, um, let me change, fight a person. Um, if they uh, get in that situation, we have it where, I mean, it's just a lot of things that we do in order to make sure the families are taken care of too. We have financial literacy uh, in terms of those who had to take on like, let's say nieces and nephews that were left behind as well. So it's just a lot that we want to do because this is a legacy project for us. This is something that we're going to be doing for the rest of our lives. Our daughters are going to be doing it. Um, and it's important to us because we feel like It's like that no man left behind kind of thing. We don't want anybody or yeah. any ever experience, experience that because Damon's uh, actually experienced that himself. His aunt, this happened to his aunt. And so that's really what it was birthed from. Right. Yeah. And you know what? I, I appreciate it because I did have uh, Damon on my show a few years ago and he you know mentioned about how the project got started. Yeah. And, you know, it's something a lot of times, you know, our, our project our fault of you know our own personal experience mm -hmm. uh, and i'm grateful that you know god led him in that way because as you mentioned earlier this project itself is a, a voice for the voiceless um yeah. and you're, you're you're giving you know more and more exposure to it whereas yeah. if it's a cold case or a case where it just didn't get that much ex, you yeah. know exposure um i'm not going to go into talking about the 
disparities between you know the various races and the cases yeah and we, yeah you know we, we we know all that um but i'm i'm grateful again how he's being led to do this um and that the creativity i remember coming to the the event you had was it 2021 yeah that was our first um, one i think yeah yeah and i i'm i'm looking around at these um uh, and I don't just want to call them paintings that these, these beautiful works of art. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this is like so amazing. You know, God forbid if that was my family, I mean, but I know that they appreciate it. And you can tell, yeah. you know, uh, on the faces of the family members and then those that, that, that spoke, how it really touched them. And they, they really felt, they felt seen, heard yeah. um, that somebody's, you know, doing this to help me um, to find my loved one or, to help, uh, you know, bring me to a point, you know, um, yeah. of helping me to deal with this. Yeah. Um, so this, this, this is a, a wonderful work. You guys, I put in the comment section. Um, I'm sorry, I only put that on Facebook. The uh, uh, website still searching as I'm talking. I'm going to put it over here on uh, Instagram as well because you guys need to check this out. This, as she mentioned, the Lord is opening up doors. They're doing. T uh, Ted talks. This man has been on, um, and and, and uh, Nicole too. They've been on the news. Um, yeah. Were you was it on Fox well, actually, News as well? Or was it not, on it's been on every. It's, we've been on Fox, NBC, ABC. We've been on all the all the networks uh, in total. And then even now we we just have a um, we we just got on to disappeared on ID and then we have another huge announcement that they'll, they'll be coming but we'll be on a we'll be on another yeah. uh television show uh coming uh this year or whatever and that's another huge door that Father God is open for others and that's the thing Father God gives you platforms and of course he wants you to do well and he wants you to always be blessed but it's almost like everything that God gives you is really for other people it, re it really is and for this it's just that we're using our skills we're using whatever we have in order to make sure the Father God allows us to help somebody else and that's all it is yeah love it still searching project and it is in the comments section. Make sure you guys go and check it out. Um, there are, and I'm sure there are other things that people can do to kind of help along with this, this project. I'm gonna let um, Nicole talk about that a little bit more, but let me recognize a few more people. Hey, Beverly. Beverly. Our friend Beverly is here. Thanks for coming in, her. sweetie. We appreciate you. Yeah, she's, she's a sweetheart and she's a big heart as well. Um, Damon, oh, okay, go ahead, Damon. NBC, ABC, <laughs> yeah. WGN, news yeah. station. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Hey, th this needs to get out. It, it needs yeah. to get out. And it, the Lord is doing that. He's, he's opening up these doors um, for this, this to go forth. So when people go to your website, I mean, I know that um, you, you've, been, you've been everywhere and you're going more places. When yeah. they go to your website, um, can they donate? Can they, they how can everything, they Yeah, everything's on the Everything's on there. Even if you want to come to our events, if you want to be able to donate or sponsor a mural, um, if you have a building, that's another thing that's it's really interesting. If you have a building that you would like our artwork to actually go up on, uh, we do that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I told Damon and I told his wife, I'm going to have to buy me a building just so I can have this man put up. <laughs> yeah. Damon is in this is at this point in where we are now, we're building out staff because it's like he had a lot of people have uh, issues getting work. We're trying to staff ourselves for the work, for the overflow. So I'm grateful okay. to Father God for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's 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 opening up doors. I know he is. Uh, I can see it. And I can't wait for that other announcement that y'all got come forth. Uh, yeah. She and I talked yeah. about them just a little yeah. bit. Okay, but um, we can't release it. it. We can't, can't release it. That's the only reason yet. we have it. Yeah, that's <laughs> can't right. It yet. But y'all gotta wait, okay? Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> but it's coming. It's coming. All right, so Nicole. Yes, ma'am. If somebody is interested in uh, a project manager, mm -hmm. are you available? <sighs> Just let ask God first before calling. Because that's the thing. I'm just being honest. I can do, and this this is one of the things what you have to have. You know, I no longer have false humility, and Damon gets on me all the time. 
um, I had to realize I do a lot of things. I do a lot of things well. Um, but I was under the deception that you couldn't say that um, or it seemed like you was being arrogant. But no, it just means that Father God has blessed me with a lot of things. And I'm, I've, I've learned to master my craft. I, I love doing production. Uh, generally, production, when it comes to cinematography or film or theater, that's my I love it all day long. Uh, okay. But in terms of my background, I went to Paul for computer information system. But a part of that was project management. And I'm really good at it. I'm really, I can literally look at your whole business and then Father God just give me insight. I think that's more prophetic too, but I can look in and just see the cracks and what could be upgraded. So, hmm. yeah. Um, we, we saw Beverly Brown on here. Beverly Brown sings your praises. I love her forever. Beverly is like, her. Beth Nicole is, oh, she's <laughs> awesome what she does. I love and, her. Uh, you know, I've been knowing Beverly. <clears throat> How long has it been Beverly? <laughs> uh, 30 years or something like that <laughs> really i didn't know that <sighs> it's been a very long time if it's not wow. 30 it's almost um, wow. but yeah she she sings your praises but i and and i uh i respect you know what what she uh what she shares with me uh, as far as people are concerned i'm, I'm looking at david said <laughs> <laughs> but no, hey, man, he's so serious. He's like, you better, because it. Look, I'll people will call me and they were like, hey Nicole, I'm doing this business, this, this, and I'll give them. And this is me. I'm thorough. So some people may just give a few comments. I give you a whole marketing plan. I just do it naturally. This is something I've been doing since for years. And Damon was like, you know how much money that's. Yeah. Okay. So he gets on me about doing that, but I can't okay. help it. It's like, yeah. Okay. It's like to me, if I feel as if you got a viable business or you're somebody that almost like you're a close friend, then it's like that's what friends do. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't yeah. never, and I, I just threw out that question. I just wanted to know. <clears throat> Damon, go take it. <laughs> that's Damon all day. David, go get me. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Beverly says she loves us. Thank you. We love you too, sweetie. Mm-hmm. So, Nicole, all right, so. Mm-hmm. Is this the only thing that you're focusing in on now, uh, this particular project, or are so you I'm, are you still stretching I, yourself out real thin? So right now, Father God is like, it's almost like, I thought I was quite settled in being an actress, um, but now I have two published books. Um, after that, he started getting me into the producing aspect of it. And then like right now, I'm actually, I've written an eight part TV series. I've written, I've written two films and then I've got numerous shorts that I have. And then now he has me taking classes. Um, and then I'm about to be in a couple other things I'm not ready to announce yet, but he's flipped the switch on what he wants me to do. Um, and then also doing a lot of consultancy on the side, uh, and writing on the side for other people too. Mm, That's good to know. Yeah, that's good to know. And uh, let's see, they can go to your. Can they email you? Nicole so random. Out? Yeah, you can go to nicole so random dot com or just email me at nicole so random at gmail dot com. Okay. But if you go to my social re- media, nicole so random on all social media, you'll see my phone number and all that kind of stuff on there. Okay. All right. We're gonna make sure we put that information up so you guys can reach out to her and, and remember what uh, Damon said. What's the budget? <laughs> um, <so>. <laughs> <laughs> all day he play. Oh, they keep playing. <laughs> right, right, right. But that's okay, though. Keep it, keep it, keep it together. Keep it together. How would you encourage somebody else? Um, even with this Wisdom Wednesday that we're we're focusing in on today, and um, you know, achieving their goals and 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 setting, you know, how you you set your dreams, you set your goals, you have your vision boards and um, things that you want to accomplish. You already talked about strategizing at the beginning. Um, Kenna, just just start talking to encourage um, those who are trying to go this route, who have been struggling to try and go this route, you know, not necessarily your route. I mean, just, no, you I, know, I would say goals. the biggest thing that somebody can do is be honest with themselves. Um, we have these ideas in our head of who we think we should be or who other people want us to be. But I think the base thing that you can probably do is just be honest with you, honest with yourself. What do you want to accomplish? Um, and when you know what you want to accomplish, the first thing that you should, you should do is find somebody who's doing that exceptionally well around you. Ask that person, hey, can, can I like for me? I'm like, hey, can I make you some food? And then you just give me all your wisdom or um, I don't believe in not paying people what they're worth. So if it's actually somebody that has who's a consultant, 
I will pay you whatever the dollar is for you to look at me. And this is what I want to do. Can you talk to me about how to, how to do this? Um, I think YouTube University is something amazing that people do not uh, utilize um, efficiently. I think that that's one of the things you could do because a lot of people say, well, I want to go to school. Well, if you don't have money to go to school, don't put yourself in debt. Go on YouTube or ask the people around you. And then you have social media, which puts you in direct contact with somebody who's across the, uh, overseas, somebody who's a, um, on the other side of the United States who can give you the same information that you will pay for. Like Damon is the one that made, we have an argument with the girls. I want them to go to college. Damon says, I'm not going to force them to go to college because Damon is an amazing artist. He went to the School of Art Institute. He says it's a waste of his, of his time. He didn't learn anything <laughs> greatly that would account for the the how much it costs for him to go there. And okay. so for me, I went to DePaul. Um, I love the experience and I want my girls to be well-rounded, but it also depends on where you are. So you have to be honest with yourself. If you don't have the money, money does not stop you. And that's the biggest thing that bothers me. People feel yes. as if um, you have to have money. They feel as if you have to have a college degree. For me, you take what you have, what's in your house. And whatever's in you how in your house, you use that until Father God continues to build you up. When you're faithful of a little, he'll make you Lord and ruler over much. But I think that most people pretty much almost like they don't start off at the small. They just see the big picture and then just don't know what to do with it. So the first thing I would say is be honest about what you want to do. If you want to be an actor or if you want to like for me, if you want to be an actor, I would say that take some acting classes. If you can't afford acting classes, go on YouTube. They have so many videos on there. Then there's free acting classes at, at, at different places. And then on social media, all you have to do is literally post on your page. Does anybody know anything about whatever, whether that's acting, project management, whether that's about doing comedy, whatever. You post that. Somebody knows something about something. You just have mm -hmm. to ask. And I think the biggest thing that people don't do, whether that be for pride, whether that be for whatever reason, they don't ask. And it's like Father God said, what he said, um, you receive not because you ask not. And you have to be okay with being vulnerable, with not knowing. You have to be okay with not being the best of what you can be yet. Um, it's just a lot of different things. And I think that that to me come down to pride. And people just don't want to say that, hey, I'm not, I'm not good at this moment at this. But I will be, but I need help. Um, I think another thing is to say that it's okay to um, not be okay. Um, that one of the biggest things I learned... Mm -hmm through this whole journey was, um, Father God, I have your joy, but I'm not happy. You know what mm. I mean? And joy is not dependent upon um, uh, the situation of whatever you're going through. It's just saying, I receive from what Father God has in terms of his peace and his joy. But happiness is saying within this situation, and this is how I feel about it. I was never happy during this situation, never. But I did have joy. Yeah. And so I, I leaned on his joy versus just my feelings for what the situation was for right now. So I would just say, just be yeah. honest. Be honest about who you are. Um, a lot of people are chasing things. It's not even who they are. It's just because they want to look a certain way to social media, look a certain way to family and friends that they pretty much pervert who Father God made them to be. But my main thing is honesty. You have to be honest on who you are and where you are. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. Okay, I was writing down notes again. So I got to be honest <laughs> with who you are um, and, and be honest with yourself. Use your resources. I heard that, you know, when you Use say, you know, look up. Um, it's free. The, the library. Yeah, yeah, the libraries oh. have free stuff. I mean, like they, and then you have to think about it. Back in the day, we didn't have as many not-for-profits that we do now. There are not-for-profits yeah. that will literally mm -hmm. give you, you go on the internet, you find anything and you can find it for free to a certain level and a certain degree. But Father God, once you once you start putting your your energy into that, he'll open more doors. But you and then that's another thing, too. Yeah. I think people can't be entitled. You can't just believe that somebody's going to put you on because that's the mindset. Now, I'm just going to get put on. You know, somebody's going to see me. I don't have to do mm -hmm. any work. People just gonna do it. And not saying that that won't be your story, because some people may have that story. I've had that story for a lot of a lot of things I've had. Um, my college was paid for totally. Um, certain things like my first vehicles was paid for totally. So some people have those stories, some people don't. But at the same time, I had a lot of parts of my story that was the same as other people. But right. there are a lot of resources out there for you just have to look. It's like seeking you will surely find. You really, really will. 
I love it. You know, and I, that, that's one of my models. Use, use your resources, you know, because you never know, you know. Yep. Um, and, and now you know, Nicole ain't saying she's not giving you all the advice that she don't take for herself. I mean, one thing she will do, she will put up links to uh, free resources from different all things. day. Because I'm, I'm like, sure hey, it's not that crap mentality. Yeah. yeah, it's not that. If yeah. I feel like yeah. if I'm able to be blessed, why why can't somebody else have that? That's weird. To, the crab mentality is so weird to me. It's so weird. Huh? I think I want to stay there. Let me read some names first. I want to stay okay. right there. Hold, hold that okay. thought about that crab mentality. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me let me see here. I see you. Um, let me put my little eyes on. I see you, cousin <laughs> Jamon. Um, some of y'all, y'all on here, but y'all haven't said anything, so I have to go and scroll back and see your names. Okay. All right. So I see you, Latoya. Um, Jamon, I did say, Mother Harris, you're on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Jolanda Simmons, right? Hey, sweet. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate you. I thank you all so much. Make sure you guys hit that share button. Hey, Missionary Smith, I tagged you in. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to her testimony earlier, but you may have to rewind it. I tagged you in on purpose. I wanted you to hear. <laughs> How the Lord brought this young lady through, um, and um, hi, hi, co oh, hi, cousin, hi, Nicole. Oh, hey, hey, Latoya. <laughs> thanks, 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 honey. Appreciate you. All right, so I said I wanted to stick a pin in that. Um, and you guys, again, if you're just not joining us, I'm so sorry because I love talking to Nicole. If you're just not joining <laughs> us, this is our Wisdom Wednesday segment, and we are, um, you know, we want to just kind of, you know, enhance or give give you. Um, some nuggets to help you to get through um, your life's journey. You know, yeah. you may be dealing with some stuff right now, or you may have a lot of things you're dealing with trying to juggle, juggle around. And so Nicole is, is she's putting some, some light to um, it for us on today. And I'm telling you, if you, if you just not joined, you're going to have to rewind and go back to the beginning <laughs> because she talked about, I asked her about, you know, her own, um, you know, challenge that she had to deal with and when she was diagnosed with cancer, um, but then how the Lord, oh my goodness, directed her and gave her wisdom and 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 he even gave her wisdom on how to think about what yeah. she was dealing with. And that that is so God is so amazing to me. He really is. Yeah. He really is. And 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 you, you within all of that you can just feel and see his love. You know, yeah. he loves us so, so much. He and he, he loved my girl, Nicole, so much. He said, this is going to come <laughs> up on you, but you're going to come out of this. And this is how you do it. And 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 wisdom was a huge, huge part of that. All right. Um, so this is what we're talking about. So just want to get you caught up there. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're here on Instagram, Facebook, and also on my YouTube channel, Get Caught in Net. Um, if you guys do come into this segment after the live feed is over, you can always go back and listen to it in its entirety. So we're going back. We're going to talk about, um, help me out. We're going to talk <laughs> I, I want to talk about that crab in the bucket mentality, yeah. uh, that, that, that spirit and how we can how we can handle that because I would tell you it's it's really interesting. Sometimes, you know, social media, social media can be a delight and sometimes it cannot be a delight. Mm -hmm. Um sometimes it can be a hindrance or a thorn in your side. I see my girl uh Beverly Brown is is throwing up uh scripture. She wants hey. to uh, yeah first Corinthians 1 26 through 36. Well you go girl uh-huh you guys look up that scripture this is this is good stuff right here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah talking about that wisdom uh-huh uh-huh yeah god has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and you know the scripture goes on from there but this crab in a bucket mentality you know people not necessarily and i think that's probably why i love your spirit because you're always pushing and encouraging people how do you handle this how do you deal with this what 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 do you say to people because sometimes that that becomes a big part of um, some individuals' lives, if you will, they, they it becomes a big part of your life because they're the ones that pulling folks down, and then the other yeah. ones are they've been pulled on trying yeah. to be, you know, what talk talk to us about this and what what your um your viewpoint is on on that um it's boundaries boundaries mm -hmm. I was someone who did not have boundaries um and I'm just honest about mine for me I'm one of those people that that. 
I'm, I'm, I call myself a journeyman. So I would go along somebody on their full journey. I don't care what you did. It doesn't matter um, how negative, how bad it was. I will be there. That's not wise. Um, because the thing that happens is when you don't have boundaries, if somebody makes an unwise choice <laughs> and you're attached to them, then they're going to bring you to a fall as well. So what you have to do is give someone the license and the free will to be able to make their choice and say, this is where I stand on that and give um, people their mm -hmm. space to make that choice with or without you. In terms of the crab mentality, I think it's weird. Um, I'm one of those people where it's like, we're so much better united. We're so, so much better than united. If one eat, all should be a bee. I'm one of those mm -hmm. people. If you were my team here and you're still integral, you're going to be my team when Father God increases me more and more. Um, I feel like a lot of times now, I think it's a heart issue that's going on nowadays. It's a level of selfishness where it's like, I don't want anybody excelling the way that I excel. Now, to me, Father God made each and every one of us uniquely. There's nobody that can replicate you. I don't care if you sat there and you taught them all day how to be a net. Nobody could be and have your sauce and have your, you know what I mean? Nobody can have, nobody else can do what you do. And so when you right. you have that identity within yourself, you don't, you're not concerned about everybody else. But the reason why there's a crab mentality is because people compare themselves. Well, they look like they're doing better than me. So if I do get something, I don't want them to have it because that means they could be even better. My thing is, it's kind of like a person who's a good mentor. If my mentee is under me or for my children, I have my children. I have a certain level of excellence that I have. I want my children to be far uh, succeed. Uh, succeed. I said, what is the word? Um, I want their, su their success to be way greater and way yeah, further yeah, than yeah. mine. But that's just not for my children. It's for everybody. So it's like, I feel like when I, like I give people, I look for grants. Um, I look for any kind of resource possible because if I know you would, you said that, Hey, I want to do this. Then if I see something that's a free resource for you, I want to get it. Cause I want you to be your greatest, your greatest self. But most of the time people aren't thinking about other people being great or other people be doing well. They're only looking for themselves to look good. And then if they do help somebody in most cases, it's only because they either want the accolades from that as well <laughs> to say they put that person on, or it's almost like a, um, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe uh, when they get further down that they can hook me up too. But the heart, it's like Father God always talks in the scriptures about the heart. He's always looking for your motive for why you do different things. And for me, that's one of the things that are one within black people or just people in general have a big issue with is saying that we all can be leaders. We all can be great. We all can have a lot. We all can grow together. We all can do well together. That's like foreign nowadays. And it's weird. It's just mm -hmm. really weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's, that's, that's like the perfect world. We, <laughs> we wish yeah. we could be like that where, where our mindset is like that, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I wish, I just really wish we could get there because sometimes I'm just going to tell you. You know, I'm looking on social media. I'm looking at the different, you know, pl platforms. I'm like, mm -hmm. y'all just acting like like grade school kids, you know. Yeah. And, but, that, but we're adults, yeah. you know. That's that's another thing I had to tweet too on social media because before I was like, man, it's just so much. But what I did, I started deleting and blocking. So I'm protecting my peace. You know how people say. But I'm also watching what's within my eye gates and my ear gates, what I hear and what I see. If I start noticing a certain kind of mentality on your page that you have consistently and there's a pattern for it, you got to get either blocked or lead or unfollowed. You have to. Because for me, I don't want my thing is what you spend the most time with you become. I don't care what, whatever people say. Well, they say um, uh, bad manners, corrupts, good. I'm probably sure I'm reading my Bible more. Um, but it's like. <laughs> I'm serious. It's my, my, my head is going, my mind is going so fast, but it's kind of like whatever environment that you're in or whatever you allow in the environment, it's going to contaminate. It's either going to pour into and make better or make worse. And if I keep seeing that on social media, you have certain things always on your platform that you're doing. If I don't want that, then I need to get it. I, I can't have it before my eyes. So I have to delete your, uh, uh, follow you. It's not deep. Yeah. And that, that doesn't even make yeah. me make it seem that people are bad. It's just that I don't want that within my mindset right now. Protect your peace. I like yeah. that. At all costs. 
mm-hmm. like that. You have to. Um, and I, and I, yeah, that 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 should that should help us <laughs> with mm-hmm. that um, that mentality. Uh, Pastor Deborah, hey, I see you. Yeah, God, He truly knows our motives. I agree with that. I agree, and um, it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out in the world. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see here. All right, so let's talk about um, how wisdom itself relates to um, you, us, psychologically and spiritually. So wisdom. You, you can take any any yeah. subject. Yeah. Thinking, look, you know, I'm I'm really uh, <laughs> I'm like a toddler. Uh, wisdom. So for me, wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. I'm learning that we have a lot of knowledge. It's it's on social media. It's the people we have in our ear. It's a lot of information, a lot of things being said a lot. But a lot of it is not either good knowledge or it's not applicable to our lives. One of the biggest things that I can say is like, learn God for yourself. And it's not one of those weird, weird in, the, in a weird sense. It's just saying that a lot of times, like you ever seen like somebody post them like so-and-so is dead. You'd be like, no, they ain't. That's false news. But a lot of times people just glean from anybody, even if it's mm-hmm. the word. They'll mm-hmm. the, And then a lot of stuff that people are even posting or people are talking about, it's so, it's either based upon their experience or it's based upon their feelings at the moment or trauma or dysfunction. So one yeah. of the biggest things in just getting to wisdom is just finding out, read the word for yourself. And then ask Father God to open up what that word means. And I remember my sister when I was younger, she used to have me read six chapters of the Bible a day. And that's, I promise you, if I had to look back at my life at certain things that Father God gave me, that's probably one of the biggest things is probably who I am, the reason why I am the way I am now. Because of the amount of words, like I was reading my Bible fully through. I, I probably re- read the Bible fully through about probably about seven or eight times. But it's okay. because of that, that, that influx of the word. Also, one of the things I was going to say, too, I forgot to mention earlier was that I listened to the word, even if I wasn't um, when I was in the hospital um, dealing with everything. I listened to the word almost 24 mm-hmm. seven. So even if I wasn't like almost like writing notes for it, I would just have it in the background. I remember even with my girls, we had certain uh, situations because they're really prophetic. And so they were having nightmares every night. And I'm like, this is weird, God. So I would have the word playing at night. So all they heard was the word. After a while, though, the word is going to clean. It's going to wipe out. It's going to push back. It's going to get rid of. And I think that's one of the biggest things today because one, back in the day, it was like, okay, people who weren't Christians weren't reading the word. Now it's Christians not reading the word. Christians mm-hmm. aren't even being around Father God unless something bad happened. Then they put up a quick prayer as an yeah. umbrella. And then they think, it's well, why is my life the way it is? The, your life is the way it is because you're not speaking the word. You're not decreeing the word. If a situation happens in your life, there is a word for it. So what you do is, like for me, um, I was dealing with, let's say, and people may think this is weird stuff, but um, I was I was having like weird heart stuff even afterwards, like the effects of cancer. So Mm. you have have cancer, then you have chemo, then you have the effects of cancer. Um, And so what I did, I said, Lord, well, there's no people aren't giving scriptures for certain things. Of course, I can say healing scriptures. But what can I do? Father God will literally as detailed as you want to know him and his word. He will meet you there. And I remember it was like scriptures talk about my, my heart beats with the rhythm of life. And I'm like, what? No, I mean, he, the stuff that's in the Bible, if you just read it, will literally be the answer to everything. And it's not a white man's Bible. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a <laughs> all crazy stuff people say. It's literally the word of God. But he's so amazing that he gave us Holy Spirit that gives us a ring of words. So you'll take that word, digest it. Holy Spirit will then give it back to you and give you understanding, interpretation of it. And then you can use that as a wisdom to apply to your life. And I don't think people get that. I think people have this remote thing of being a Christian or getting the word. It's just like almost like going to church and being clapping your hands and getting excited for a, little, a few minutes. And that's it. No, we're in a war and the yeah. war is over your life and over your mind. And so what you have to do is get your arsenal. You get your tools, which is the word of God. And you literally put a defense up against what's happening to you. What pushed back cancer wasn't Nicole. 
It wasn't anything that I could do. It was the word of God. And the thing about it, I remember the enemy came to me with that. He said, well, you haven't seen anybody around you who lived when they got a cancer. Um, um, when they were told that they, they had cancer. And I said, mm -hmm. that's, I'm, that's a, well, I said, that's a fact. That's a fact. But the truth of the matter is the word of God said that he healed me. And so for me, I had to use the word every time that that situation presented itself or I was triggered. I had to use the word to push it back. The word will be a standard for me. It will push back the enemy. If I resist the devil, submit myself unto God, resist the devil, he has to flee. It's like after a while you start saying that word, you start, you literally feel the might of God come within you. So a lot of stuff like people is like people like, man, how'd you deal with that? I didn't deal with it. I let the word deal with that. All I had to do was keep my mind attention on Father God. I will submit myself to you in saying your word. That's the only thing I did. I said, whatever your word is, that's the only thing I want to speak. I won't let any kind of crazy word come out, evil communication come out of my mouth about what you said about me. And that mm -hmm. was the fight. That was the fight. That's the wisdom that he gave me. If I speak his word only, he will bring it to pass. So, I mean, it'll be times where it'll just be tears coming down my face. But I won't let that word come out. I won't let my feelings come out because feelings are temporary. They don't mean anything anyway. I mean, you know how fickle people are. <laughs> like one minute, <laughs> one minute people aren't happy. And so for me, my main thing was, but what happened was when I started speaking the word consistently and only, it changed me. Like stuff that was in my yeah. heart, I didn't even know that was in there started coming out. Insecurity, um, abandonment, rejection. All this stuff was coming out that was like cancers that was in my heart. And Father God brought that out as well. So it wasn't just a physical healing. It was a full, I feel like I'm not even the same person anymore. I literally told Damon, I said, I don't think people are going to like me anymore because I'm not the same person. I really, I'm really not. Um, I feel like I'm, I've always been a kind person, but I've never been a nice person because I'm so, my mind is so like, I'm a realist. Yeah. So. And then half the time, people are like, Nicole, man, you don't sound like you say it because of the advice I give. My, my advice is biblical, but people are shocked by how my response will be to certain situations because I'm, I'm real about certain things. But yeah. for me, it's like that all came from the word where I don't have to be pretentious. I don't, I don't have to be or act a certain way. I mean, I grew up in the hood with like roaches and I got to stop saying rats because that's New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, blue sands. I had right. drive. I mean, how, you know what I mean? But when you come from that and then Father God continue to move and grow you up, it's kind of like it's one of those things where it's like, what where that all came from? It came from the word. The wisdom is really in the word. Even my girls, the biggest thing that I can say that I've done for Father God is that I raised my girls to know him for themselves. Mm -hmm. My life is all I've already I can I've maxed out my life already that I can actually my daughters get up and they read their Bibles in their journal and I don't have to check on them. They do it themselves. And they've been doing this since they was like probably like five or six. That's the biggest flex I have. Those are so. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you guys have to meet meet their girls. They're just just absolutely beautiful. Very talented. Very smart. Um, I love you've instilled that within them you know you, you talk you know good long and hard about the word of god and and as you started talking about um when you were in the hospital um dealing with the cancer you had word of god playing and i don't know if my niece is still on here or not but we were just talking about this in uh, my husband's bible class about how i typically and now I, I will do that that audio bible i'll keep yeah. it. that's yes that's on repeat at, at, yes. especially at night. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I'll just share this. And you mentioned about your girls having the nightmares. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we, and we know sometimes if we try and come to us in our sleep, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and, and have you dreaming all kind of ways. A lot of times it, mm -hmm. it might be the TV that's still on or it could be some other stuff, yep. mm -hmm. you know, so I learned how to shut that down. And, and like you, that, that was using wisdom, which you mentioned and having that, that yeah. word play. I'll, I'll just have the word just playing while I'm asleep, yeah. you yeah. know, and that it, it's, it's going to get into your subconscious. Yeah. It it's going to get in you, yeah. you know, um, and I, I think, you know, a lot of people say uh, they used to try to read the word to go to sleep because they couldn't sleep or whatever. They go to um, sleep. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. I said, I said, yeah, yeah, you can do that. It either get in you or or you fall yep. asleep. You know, you, yep, you have to. <laughs> but having it play, you know, cons. I I think that's important. I think that's key. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that word of God. I mean, you have to keep, you know, uh, browbeating it into you, yep. if if you will, um, yes. because you be faced with these challenges like my guest has faced but she was she was diagnosed with terminal cancer yeah. uh, barely out of her 30s you know and she she relied on father god and yeah. you know the word of god you know or just we, we don't or just know work her. yeah yeah or just i'm yeah. thinking like every day i'm i'm really honest about stuff it's like even when people and not, it doesn't even have to be as something as serious cancer is draining even with family, it's draining. Even just at your job, it's draining. Even with your friends, it's draining. If you're a minister, you have That's all true. these things pulling from you, pulling. When do you have time to pour back into you or to fill yourself back up? Most of the time, people are dehydrated. It's like they're so they don't have anything left to give. And that's why I think that a lot of people like the strong people or the people are leaders or ministers. They don't have a lot of people who are pouring back into them. Because usually the person that the them being the strong person, they are the oasis. They are the resource place. You know what I mean? But one of the biggest things Father God showed me is that you need to change the people around you. Because really, it should be a reciprocity with all the people around you. That So if they notice that, hey, you know, she, she's a little bit off, then they can pour back in. And for me, it was a situation where a lot of times I'll be the person pouring, which I have no problem. I, I mean, I just... I just really do love people. I really do like making sure that people are good. But at the same time, it's not wise not to have people around you or a community around you that's not doing the same. Like for me, one of the things that's a push up, what was it, like a turn off for me is somebody who's selfish or somebody who just treats people not highly. If Jesus gave his blood for that person, like that's one of the biggest things I think I learned um, in not having bitterness and anger and, and just being able to forgive people. If Jesus died for that person, how dare I? Not mm -hmm. saying that I can't have boundaries and no longer give people access to me, but how dare I have, I can't put my mouth on people. I don't know how people out nowadays just talking and talking crazy about people and dishonoring people. I can't do that because to me, if Jesus mm -hmm. died for that person, how dare I say something about them? Now, you can have communication with that person saying, these are my standards. You meet those standards. Hey, I have to move on, shift and move. But in terms of like the dishonor that's going on nowadays, people talking about people, that stuff is so deadly to your heart because it creates yeah. a stress in you. And what does stress do? It makes you it, it, it distracts you from your or your purpose. It takes away your focus. It puts the attention on something else other than Father God. So it's like these are like the, the almost like the tactics of the enemy to get you as far as way as uh, far as away from your purpose or to pervert you from the original purpose Father God gave you. And that's one of the biggest thing. Like I'm in such a, a, a state of peace now. I was one of those people that would be considered like I don't I still don't believe I will be considered. I've been I went to therapy. I don't necessarily think I'm a people pleaser. But I like seeing people happy. If I see somebody who's close to me and they're not, they're upset with me or they're not feeling the greatest, then for me as a friend, then I want to come in and see how I can help and temper whatever's going on. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't have any boundaries in terms of um, how far to let that go. For me, it's like I was, I'm, I'm, I'm ride or die. But you're going to ride and you're going to die. And you're going to just. <laughs> A lot of situations that you had no business in because of who you connected yourself with and to. That's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Ooh -wee. She has me mesmerized sometimes when she's talking. You know, but it, it's, that's uh, this is a lot of information on today, guys. And I, I hope that there's something uh, that's being said that will help encourage you. Um, as you're you're going through life and dealing with various situations, because we can make it. God gave me at the beginning. There's there's definitely hope, you know. And when we see so much happening, whether we've created it ourselves or things have been created yeah. around us, so much is happening. You know, it, things are happening. Things are happening. You know, with every you know, it's much. You can kind of think on on, um, but. We can make it. There is hope. 
get into that work, guys. Um, she, she's given us some great tips on today. Make sure you guys strategize. And I'm, I'm just doing a little paraphrasing of what she's talked about on today. Speak <laughs> positive things. Forgiveness is a key. That's important. Uh, she, she spoke about that on today. She says it's okay not to be okay. Uh, okay to not be okay. Did I say it right? Um, yeah. <laughs> be honest with yourself, you know, um, and, and with who you are. Um, and then use your resources. I like that part. Use your resources uh, to kind of further yourself and to make, you know, um, better uh, decisions um, about what, what your uh, goals are in life. This has been tremendous, honey. I'm telling you, I, I knew, I knew, I knew I, when I reached out to her that this was going to be great on today. Let me go back over here and make sure I didn't miss anybody, uh, miss calling out anybody's name on today. Hey, Janice, I didn't know you came in. Thank you. I appreciate that um, for watching on today. Who's that? Uh, oh, Toya says, thank you. Let me put this up on the screen. I'm like a kid in the candy store with this. Thank you for all this wonderful advice and information. That is uh, uh, from Latoya. Thanks, Latoya, for that comment. Yeah, this this has been great. I'm telling you, um, do you want to wrap us up with anything on today? Maybe something that you left out that you wanted to uh, make mention uh, on today? You have the space to do it. Yeah, I would just say nowadays there's so much negativity going around that being a light is so important. Um, and the best way that we can be a light is to spend time with Father God. And I know you always hear that. I tell people, like, you're just going to get tired of hearing me say that. But I think once we spend more time with Father God and knowing what his plan is for us, what our purpose is, a lot of issues and stress and drama really does fade away. One of the main reasons why I'm so peaceful now is because my first thought is to listen to what he has to say. And one key way that you can see this is if you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is get on social media or the first thing that you do is do something other than addressing the fact that you woke up and he and you literally have that time and that moment with him. And it doesn't have to be anything deep. It doesn't have to be spooky, pooky. It could just be like, Father God, thank you for this day. Right there, you're solidifying that you are still his. He is still yours and that your focus is first on him. Um, other than that, I would just say be ha be happy. Find your joy, whatever you like doing, and it wouldn't matter whether or not you were getting paid for. I'm serious. Do that. Position yourself that way. Um, if people get upset with you, let it go. Don't have drama. People can have drama, but you don't have to go to their party. <laughs> you can reject the invitation and not go. Um, and then also just know, be kind to people. It's really hard out in these streets. Just be kind to people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you, you never know what an individual has just dealt with when yeah. they maybe came in contact with you. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm looking at and I, I'm just reflecting on, you know, families that have lost loved ones and even um, in Chicago um, yeah. yesterday, lost a Chicago firefighter, right. um, young man, and he had just walked his daughter down the aisle, I think they said like a week before, <laughs> because the daughter was on her honeymoon. So she had to come back. I'm sure she probably didn't think that was the last time she would see her father walking her down the aisle. Um, it, things happen so fast. I love how you say be kind to people. Yeah. Again, you do not know what someone is dealing with. I was looking on Facebook the other day and um, my heart goes out. My heart really goes out to people, you know, those who are grieving you know, the death of a loved one. Yeah. And I, I saw someone's post and, you know, they, they actually kind of preface some of their posts by saying, I know you guys are probably getting tired of me, but, but see, this is how they're dealing with that death. They, they lost someone that was very, very special to them. Yeah. And so I reached out to them in my inbox. I said, I want to send you a copy of my book. Wow. Give me your address. Yeah. You know, because I, 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 yeah, sometimes you may say, okay, the money, whatever, have them go to Amazon. Yeah. Sometimes it's just it's that it's personal nice. touch. Yeah. yeah. And because they even say, well, how much is it? I said, no cost. No yeah. cost. Send wow. it to you. And, you know, then they, they actually got it in the mail and they text me. They said, thank you so much, you know, um, before they even started reading it. But they, they yeah. were just so appreciative of, um, you know, receiving it. But, be kind, be nice to people. Yeah. You, you don't know. It could be the difference 
um, you know, whatever they decided to do on that day, you know, um, your, your kindness can help. It, it can go a long way. So that was great advice. The entire segment that you gave was great <laughs> advice on today. So thank you so much for taking time for accepting. Uh, of course. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. I'm telling you. <laughs> She's real. She, she's down to earth. You know, she said she's a realist and she is. Um, but one thing I did say earlier, she loves God and she loves his people. And Nicole just wants to see everybody succeed. I, know I do. Does. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> that be good. And he <laughs> right, right, right. So you guys, again, to get in contact with her, to reach out to her, to follow her projects, her work, um, you guys can, uh, first for the project, Still Searching Project, you can go to stillsearchingproject.com. I said that right. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, also, let me see, because I think... I think Damon was trying to help us out a little bit. He probably here. was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though he's supposed to be, I think he's supposed to be painting the studio. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, don't don't tell off on him now. Okay, so <laughs> there's the, there's the uh, website, uh, so you can find out more information about the Still Searching Project that uh, Nicole is project manager of, co-founder. Did I have that right? Yes, ma'am. And um, her husband Damon Reed is is the one that is. Is doing all. I'm gonna throw this over here. He's doing all the, he's doing all the work. <laughs> They're both doing the work, but uh, this this is great. And then also, if you are interested in reaching out to her for her work, you can email her mm -hmm. at Nicole so random at gmail.com. Uh huh. Right. What she just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nicole so random for everything. So across all social media platforms and email, it's uh, Nicole so random at Gmail. Great, great, great. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the comment section so you guys can make sure you um, reach out to her. And I'm sure if you send her a friend request, she may accept it. You know, but be nice, be nice to her, and <laughs> and see. <laughs> random stuff. But thank you again. We appreciate you. What, what's coming up? In anything coming up? Yeah, we I have a few not, things. We just, yeah, we just. I can't say right now. <laughs> as soon as I can, I'll okay. post. I promise you. Okay, what's coming up that you can't talk about? Well, right now I'm that just. I'm, talk about. I'm, yeah, right now we have the uh, disappear uh, disappeared at ID is coming up. Uh, Damon's actual artwork we're doing that's going to be a Chicago PD, and then we have a couple of different things that we're doing at the Discover Center uh, for the Still Searcher Project. But you can find that all on the website. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys, you got it there. Make sure you reach out to her. Let her know that you saw her on Get Caught in Bed <laughs> and you will find out some more information and I'm sure she will definitely be uh, able to assist you. So thank you again, Nicole. I love you, girl. I appreciate you. I love you, you too. <laughs> okay. Take care All of yourself. Right. Bye-bye. All right, guys, and she's um, leaving us on today just um, for this time because we'll have to have her back. I don't know why I'm singing, but that's OK. But um, this was great. It was a great session. And she, she I'm telling you, she is such an encourager, such uh, an individual that will uplift you. And she gave us some great, great wisdom nuggets on today, things that we can take on our journey and make sure that uh, we apply it. Guys, thank you so much, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, for watching, for commenting on today. And those of you that did come in, you never said a word, you never typed a word, but you were there. I thank you as well. I couldn't see your name, so I couldn't call you if that was the case. Uh, but thank you for, for taking time out with us on today and make sure you guys join us on next week. Um, you'll see in my promos that Wisdom Wednesday is such a hot segment that I'm having a back-to-back -back, uh, segment on it. So next Wednesday, we're going to have another Wisdom Wednesday segment. And you do not want to miss it. I promise you, you don't. Uh, God, is, God is helping us and he's getting us ready uh, through our life's journey. We, we, we definitely need the more wisdom of God. All right, I'm going to play this outro and you guys will see you next week okay on the next session of get caught in a net caught in a net with a net for your mind body and soul get caught in a net with a net it's your intellectual radio show here to
get caught in a net with 